and here is SOL topic number nine, sequences and series. For this topic, it is very important for us to use our formula sheet. Our state test will give us all of our arithmetic formulas and all of our geometric formulas. It will also give you these five symbols for the, some of the parts of our formulas. Remember, for arithmetic, we are adding a constant, and for geometric patterns, we are multiplying a constant. When we see this big capital sigma, that means that we're talking about a sum. We can write each of the terms and add them together. If we need to find the sigma symbol on our Desmos online calculator, hit the keypad, go to functions, miscellaneous, and then you will find that symbol. The top formulas for arithmetic and geometric, these are our rules for finding any term. I will say the rule for the nth term. That's usually what you'll see. We just need to find the parts, plug them in, and we find the term that we're looking for. The bottom two formulas are our sum formulas. That's when we want to add up multiple terms together. If you're ever looking for what D is, that's the, the common difference for arithmetic patterns, you can take any two consecutive terms and subtract backwards. Usually just the second term minus the first term will give you the D, the common difference. If you're looking for R, that's the common ratio for geometric. You can take any two consecutive terms and divide them backwards. Usually just the second term divided by the first term. Let's look at our first example. It says the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series follows. This is the same formula that they have on your formula sheet. They just don't have the little infinity here as a subscript. Remember, we can only use this formula if our common ratio's value, its absolute value, is something that's less than 1. But it is a simple formula to use. We just need the first term and that common ratio. It says, what is the sum of the following infinite series? So we have all of these terms, and they go on forever. Well, to be able to use this formula, I need a sub 1. And that's as simple as looking at the first term, that's 2. I also need the common ratio, which is r. And r is what we multiply to get from one term to the next. And we are multiplying by 1 half. If you're not sure about that, you can take any two consecutive terms and divide backwards. 1 divided by 2, or 1 half divided by 1. But r is 1 half. And now we simply just need to plug that into the calculator. I'm going to pull up my Desmos calculator. And I'm going to type this formula with the first term is 2 divided by 1 minus my common ratio, which is 1 half. And I see that my answer is 4, and that's it. I typed right into the formula, and I got my answer choice is B. Let's look at example 2. It says, what is the value of, and then it has this big sigma notation. That's that sigma, uh, that Greek letter sigma. I'm going to pull up my Desmos calculator and show you where that is and type that into the calculator. So let's clear out what we just did. Now remember, the sigma is down here by the keypad and over here to functions, miscellaneous, and then the sigma symbol is right here. It's going to use the value of n. It doesn't really matter if you use n or any other letter, but since we're using an n here, I'm going to keep using that n. I'm going to do 1, and at the top of my sigma, I'm going to type in the 3. And then I need to type exactly what I see here, so I see parentheses, and then 17n minus 15. I'll close my parentheses, and that's it. It's as simple as that. The calculator has already calculated that my entire sum is 57, and that's answer choice D. So the Desmos calculator is pretty simple when I just ha can type in the symbol. Let's look at our final example. It says, which explicit formula could be used to find the nth term in this geometric sequence? So, and then it gives me um, five of the terms. So I've got all these answer choices. What I'm going to show you is how to type each of these answer choices into the Desmos calculator and use a slider to see which one actually is the correct one. So pull up our Desmos calculator. I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to start with answer choice A. It says 2 and then times 1,000 raised up to the n power. Now it's going to ask me if I want to add a slider, and I'm going to click on that. And right now, the slider would involve all the decimal, decimals, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to change this step 
tool one. That means that I'm just counting by ones. So basically the integers. Now when I have the n is one, if I slide it over, the next one is n is two, and then three, and then four. Let's go back to one. When n is one, I have my first term, which is 2,000, which is what I'm supposed to have. But my second term, when n is two, is not supposed to be this big. It's actually supposed to be getting tinier to 200. So I know that this is not the correct answer. I'm gonna go back to when n is one, and I'm gonna change this to answer choice. Well, first of all, answer choice A is not correct, so of course, let's cross that out. Let's try answer choice B. Pull up Desmos, and I'm gonna change this two to a 200, and it's times 10 to the n power. And let's see what I've got. Oh, I got the first term is correct again, but when I slide over to the second term, no, nope, it's getting bigger again. So that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna say answer choice B, no good cross that one out. Let's see if it's answer choice C. Pull up Desmos, and the, fur, the coefficient is now 2,000. I have to change this base to a parentheses 1 tenth, and I'm going to delete that thing. Uh-oh, what happened here? Uh, 1 tenth, and it's raised to the n minus 1 power. Now, when I go up to this exponent and try to type in minus 1, unfortunately, it doesn't stay up in this superscript. So let me backspace out of there. Let me go back into that and get on the other side of n. And I'm going to type n minus 1 and then just delete the n that was there. That's one way to do it. You could also use parentheses to make the superscript that. I get my first term is 2,000. When I slide to n is 2, I get my second term is 200, which is correct. And when n is 3, I get 20. And then when n is 4, I get 2. And it looks like we have the correct answer here. And that is it. Answer choice C is our answer. So Desmos is pretty helpful for a problem like this. If you notice, it said that this was geometric. And on our formula sheet, a sub n is supposed to be a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And we can just double check that that's true. a sub 1 is our first term. And that's why the 2,000 is right here. R is the number that we're multiplying by, and we are multiplying by one-tenth, and that's why the base is one-tenth. So this is correct. Thanks for watching this video, and have fun in the packet. Good luck with that.